So the idea is not to be a startup for very long. The idea is to graduate and become a real company. But a lot of entrepreneurs kind of get stuck in this lifestyle. They, they're kind of wasting their time. They're kind of wasting their time. Hi, my dear audience. So the welcome back to the Talk Salon Talk to View. So today I have uh, the significant expert on the venture capital, the banker, and the investor, Mr. Vitaly Golden. <laughs> So Vitaly Golden visit here in Seoul uh, to give his keynote speeches for the Global Entrepreneurship the Week Korea 2022. And I am also very honored to have him today. So hello Vitaly. Hello and thank you for having me. Could you just shortly introduce yourself to my audience? My name is Vitaly Golem. I'm the mobility and climate tech partner at Drake Star Partners, which is a investment bank, global investment bank. Uh, so we focus on M&A. In the past, I was also a corporate uh, VC, corporate venture capitalist. I helped launch the corporate venture on Hewlett Packard, HP Tech Ventures. And before that, I spent my whole career from my teenage days as a founder and CEO in Silicon Valley. Okay, glad to hear that. Um, I was informed that this is your second time. So compared to the time, do you have do you notice any changes in here? So, uh, I've noticed some changes already. I mean, COVID obviously stopped a lot of activity, economic activity, a lot of startup activity in pretty much everywhere. Um, but you can see the maturity of the companies already. You know, in the last five, six years, the companies are getting more interesting, more complicated, deeper technology, more global, um, more global appeal mm -hmm. of technology. So certainly we've seen some big companies uh, develop big startups, big technology-based companies in Korea in the last five years. So looking forward to a lot more. Uh, Korea has a lot of the ingredients needed, which is a lot of human capital, a lot of talent, engineering talent that can, you know, create uh, really interesting companies and answer, answer to the, create answers to the problems of the future. Thank you, Mr. Lee. Uh, I would like to start our conversation with your speech topics. So first, the startup. I'd like to start the startups. So um, uh, before the COVID-19, we have some special elements of the startup the boosting. So the startup is kind of the symbol for the youngsters as uh, the key for the success. Okay, so what is the startup exactly? What is the difference of the, the building a business? What is the difference of the startups? And why we should do focus on the startup, give uh, interest in on the startups? What is the potential of the startups? So it's, it's really great to see a culture like Korea where it's always um, kind of very rigid culture, very rigid business culture especially, uh, for even the government to support entrepreneurship and uh, making it okay to experiment and fail. Most experiments fail in science, most experiments fail in business. Uh, and startups by their nature are doing something that nobody's ever done before. So there's no... You know, nobody's ever done it before, you have to figure it out. And you are, most people are going to fail multiple times before they figure out what the success looks like. And for the last 10, 15 years, the word startup has become very, you know, very romanticized around the world. Not just Korea, but all over Asia, all over Europe. It's become very popular, very fashionable. Uh, but the important thing is for entrepreneurs is to keep in mind that what they're trying to do is not be a startup forever. It's not a lifestyle that they're trying to uh, live. You know, they, startup is a temporary business. It's a temporary mm -hmm. experiment that's looking to become a real company. So the important thing is to go through this process as quickly as possible to figure out if your idea can, can become a product, will you have customers? Will somebody be willing to pay for it with their money and time or both and choose your product over somebody else's where you can hire people, build processes, build systems, build a real company out of it. So the idea is not to be a startup for very long. The idea is to graduate and become a real company. But a lot of entrepreneurs kind of get stuck in this lifestyle. They, they raise a little bit of money from an accelerator. That's enough for them to live on, to go to conferences, to hand out their CEO business card. But if they're not making progress after a year or two and they keep doing the same thing, they're kind of wasting their time. They need to build a business, or if the idea doesn't work, go on to the next idea very quickly, as quickly as possible. I like to say, like, don't waste your non-refundable lifetime. You can always raise more money, but you'll never get more time. Um, so that's very important for, for founders to understand what they're trying to do here. If they're, you know, if they're going to a big company, they, it, it's very, the structure is, is there. You become an individual contributor, you become a manager, director, VP, etc. It takes many years to climb the ladder. 
But with a startup, all everybody knows, it's kind of, you get this high status as a founder, you go to conferences, maybe somebody puts you on stage, maybe you get an accelerator, but really at the end of the day, you're trying to build a business mm -hmm. and you need to build that business and graduate from that stage. It was very clear to understand the what startups and what will be there and I was impressed with your explanation saying that startup is kind of experiment and we need to graduate right. to become a real company, real business. That's right. Okay, so this is very important point. So um, I'd like to go to the second question. So we are very accustomed to the using the words we need to be innovate mm -hmm. and we need to be changed. Well, actually, we don't know the when is the right time of the change or the innovation. Do you have any um, the tips or the, any the signs or the, any alarms that this is the right time or that this is the last moment to be changing or to be innovative for the business? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's it's the words disruption and innovation and uh, change have been overused so much that they lose their meaning. Uh, but their meaning is very important. The, the, the meaning there is not, not change for the sake of just keep making changes. But what you're usually, usually startups are built on a new generation of technology. And the word disruption, what that means is that you're able to do something um, that was done before. You're able to do it 10 times faster, better, or cheaper, or a combination of those things. And you're able to do that because you're using technology that wasn't available even a year ago. So you're using new technology to solve maybe existing problems, but you're doing it so much better that customers are willing to try your product and switch away from a big company. That's really the idea. So when we talk about disruption of markets, that's what that means. If somebody comes in to an established industry and that solves that problem in a fundamentally different way that's 10 times faster, 10 times better, 10 times cheaper. So, question of innovation. Well, innovation means that new technology is invented, and then you're commercializing it. You're making products out of it. You're getting somebody to pay you for your new service or, or product that you couldn't create a year ago. Right? So that's the idea. So the company, the best companies that, that last decades, they keep reinventing themselves. They, they see new technology and they disrupt themselves before somebody else has a chance to come over and take away their business. So that's really the idea behind all of this, right? A lot of this corporate innovation, a lot of these words get thrown around, this big word salad of business terms, um, but it's meaningless unless you think about really why you know, the word innovation is so important. It's to make sure that you stay in business or you, you, know, you take away somebody else's business because you, you can solve that problem for the customer that much better, that much cheaper, that much faster. Thank you for your explanation. He is also expert in the mobility, so the, my third question should go to the mobility area. We live in the metropolitan area, and especially the kind of the big city has a very big headache is a mobility. And I'm expecting that uh, the mobility can be a solution for the life of quality for the citizen. So every city, uh, especially metropolitan government, is uh, trying to transform its uh, the city with a light livable. So metropolitan government is. Uh, interesting in the mobility also mm -hmm. and uh, I think that you are also the professional of the mobility so the, how do you see the what is your expectations of the mobility matters so mobility is is the area that I chose specifically about seven years ago to focus on oh. because it is a five trillion dollar market it's the biggest thing in the world mm -hmm. um, and it's going through a once in a hundred year change and transition so mobility 10, 20 years ago was mobile phones that we're using to record this now. That's what mm -hmm. it is, moving data. But mobility today means moving people and goods mm -hmm, mm -hmm. around the world. Yeah. And it could be in cities, it could be logistics, you know, it could be transportation of goods across borders, uh, across the world. All of that is changing. And we're talking about new fuels, right? Going electric, uh, obviously going electric uh, for all forms of transportation. Um, but it's also um, the different forms, right? If you have, when we do have real autonomy, we won't necessarily need to have to own vehicles, right? Because you will have a vehicle around, you know, right now we already have kind of a fuel for that. So in San Francisco, mm -hmm. it's cheaper to just ride Uber every day and uh, then own a car uh -huh. because you're paying for the car, for the insurance, for parking, for everything else. 
Um, so already see the shared aspect of mobility mm -hmm. make an impact. Mm -hmm. But when we have truly autonomous vehicles, 70% of cost of Uber um, is the driver. So the cost of transportation will fall. And the, and the transportation will be much more convenient because right now you can use public transport, it will be a, a bus or a metro, and it's on a certain schedule, you have to live your life on that schedule. But when we're talking about autonomous transport, going around cities, you will be, it will be much more available, much more flexible. Um, scooters, within a few years, the electric stand-up scooters became really popular because they're so convenient. So when, you're, when you live in a busy downtown small area, when your commute is not that long, but it's just a little too long to walk, you know, that, that's a very convenient, very inexpensive form of transport and a nice alternative to getting in a car and driving somewhere. So all these things are changing. Um, it's really interesting. And what I mentioned on stage today is you have two of the main drivers that we've seen in our research in mobility is uh, government regulations and government incentives. So government regulations around the world, we have country by country, region, now Europe, now most of US saying no more internal combustion after 2035. That's huge. That means that everybody doesn't have a choice. They have to move to electric. Okay. And then the incentive is the government will subsidize. They will do tax rebates. They will help pay for the vehicles. So all of these things are happening. And the result is very uh, a lot less pollution in the cities. We're already starting to notice that. A lot less noise in the cities. People don't think about that, but electric vehicles are almost silent. Then there's other forms. I've uh, been advising Hyperloop TT which is the first company organized to pursue the Hyperloop concept mm -hmm. in 2013. Um, imagine not having to go to the airport, get on a plane, fly for two hours, then drive another hour uh, where you can go city center to city center at the speed of sound. Um, so just amazing breakthroughs coming uh, that will completely transform everything. Okay, Pitoli, it was a very great time to have an interview with you. Thank you for having me, it was a pleasure. I look and forward to being back in Seoul again. Sure. So the next time, we'd like to uh, see each other with your wonderful next book. We'll do it. Thank you. Thank you.